Hey there guys, Toothpaste Tuber here. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today we are live and I'm super duper duper excited for this. So today we're just going to be playing KSP and blinking around a little bit. I hope you guys can join me and uh, though, uh, hello to those viewers who are in archive land as well who are watching this after the fact. Um, welcome aboard. We're going to have a great time today. Just kind of chill and have a great time. Anyway, let's get straight into this. We are playing Kerbal's Space Program today. I'm gonna go to my YouTube save, and the music abruptly cuts off because, you know, it's boring. Um, I need to do something, pop out chat. I'm setting up my stream right now so that you guys can all see it. Um, and so that I can see it as well. Alright. Whoops, I clicked the wrong button. I'm trying to move the KSP window, and I end up clicking into the VAB. Alright, here we are. We're in the window, but we need to exit this place. Okay. Let me just type in the chat. Hey there, guys. Alright, where do we stand? We need to test the Poodle liquid fuel engine splashdown at Kerbin. Ah, we can do that easily. If you guys will excuse me, I am a little bit gassy, because I just finished eating, and uh, I feel burpy. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at this plane. Oh my gosh, that is... Yeah. Yeah. It just looks revolting. Here, I need to fix this. The Juno 1. Here, this needs to get fixed. I tell ya. I'm not one for sticklers. Hola, como estas, Dark Samus? You sprechen the español. Muy, muy, um, buen, bien. Muy bien. You speak it very well. <laughs> I, I speak it less well, but still. Um,. How art thou today? I do hope you are well. This is going to be a very relaxed stream. Just kind of sit, chill, hang out, watch me play Kerbal Space Program, if you're into that sort of stuff. And yeah. Let's see. Um, I don't have a little ending nose cone, so I'll just put another intake on that. Let's recall that, the Juno one. Okay, what were we going to do? We were going to test the Poodle Liquid Fuel Engine. Well, splash down. So, what we can do, pretty good, good to hear it. So what we can do is go like this, and, whoops, not used to the controls in here. What, right now, what we're just trying to do is to test the Poodle liquid fuel engine splash down at Kerbin. Um, also, if you will look down here, you will see that I have installed the Kerbal Engineer Redux mod um, for KSP 1.3, which is really, really cool. Love this mod. Um, it basically enables me to do a bunch of cool sciencey stuff without having to uh, be worried about, um, you know, the other um, sciencey stuff going on. <laughs> this is very vague, but basically what I mean is uh, it allows me to do a lot of cool science and go to other planets without having to worry about delta V calculations and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so, Poodle. Liquid fuel engine, actually, nope, we don't need that there, we need that to go there, and what I'm going to do is basically just like that, and then I'm just going to put a little Juno engine and an air intake. Actually, yeah, Juno engine, why not? Juno engine, air intake on the front, so that it can fly. I'm not actually going to make this thing take off, I'm just going to make it roll down the one way. And, uh, yeah. Just come, chill, hang out, maybe grab some popcorn and a blanket, and have a good time. Um, what should we call this thing? Sorry, I'm crotching my knuckles. What should we call this thing? Um, the Poodlefier. Poodle, D-O-E, you fire. F-I-E-R, um, Poodlefier. There we go. I could call it the Pewdilifier, but then I think uh, that PewDiePie would uh, not really enjoy that. Hold on. 
Mm. And there's a amazing stew that I have cooked, and it's fantastic. Mm. I do wish you guys could eat it right now. Let's see. Get the chat over here in the other window. All right. So I really don't want to crash this thing, which means I'm gonna play it safe and only run this at two times time acceleration. Um, as far as we can. I mean, I don't want to run off the side of the runway, which we might do. Whoa, bouncing, bouncing, rocking, rocking and rolling down to the beach. I'm strolling. But the seagulls poke at my head. I said, not fun. I said, the seagulls, ah, stop it now. Oh my gosh, bad lip reading. If you guys have not seen that YouTube channel, go check it out. It's a really great channel. And by the way, um, in my previous stream, I'm not sure. Yeah, or no. My previous stream two weeks ago. Not fun. I said, those seagulls, stop it now. Anyway. Um, in my previous stream, I mentioned a YouTube channel called, um, or I didn't say the name of it in the in the video, because uh, I had forgotten the name of it. But the YouTube channel is a really really cool YouTube channel uh, about book reviews, which is called Segi Books, and um, it is. Oh, hold on. Let me open the window. Okay. It's. Oh, darn it! I'm signed in on my other YouTube channel. Hold on. Bear with me. What's it called? It's called Sagi Books, which is uh, S A G I E B O O K S. Sagi Books. It's a really fun uh, channel where this person uh, chills and um, basically talks about their favorite books. Um, I found her because. Uh, whoa, hold on. I'm coming in the end of the runway. I found her because she reviewed a great book that I was interested in as well. Um, oh, jeez! No! No! Oh! Well, we got some explosions, am I right? <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, darn, we're gonna have to redo that. Um, dang it, okay. Anyway, um, I guess she reviewed a book that I was interested in called, uh, The Iron Trial. And, uh, and so yeah, um, really great channel, you should go check it out. Arclamp, how you doing? Glad to have you on board, good to see you again. Um, I was just talking to Dark Samus, and to the people who will be viewing this after the fact, your chat will be viewed for thou by thousands of people for thousands of years. I just want you to know that so that you get stage fright. Um, basically, um, about a YouTube channel that I found, um, called Sagi Books, uh, S-A-G-I-E-B-O-O-K-S. -O it's a really fun book review channel that I highly recommend to anyone who's interested, or even mildly interested, in literature. Or even if you're not, and you're just interested in, like, watching a funny person do funny book reviews. Uh, nice, R. Clamp says. I picture him saying that with some sort of accent of some sort that isn't American. Um, because non-American accents are always more interesting. <laughs> Forgive me if that sounds a bit racist, but it's just because I'm American, and I think that American accents are kind of boring. Alright, I'm just trying to test the Poodle engine, this engine here when I am in the water, which means I first have to get to the water, and that's actually more dangerous than you would think if you're trying to do it in a timely manner. So, um, yeah, today's stream is just going to be a very chill stream. Uh, I still haven't even finished my dinner. And chillin'! Oh yeah, Final Space Frontierists, welcome aboard. We have our viewers, we have our subject matter, we have our obnoxious person who talks over the subject matter, we have everything going on, so here we are. Um, this is gonna be a very chill stream. Just I got five minutes before. So, okay, so five minutes before seven, I looked up the clock and I was like, "Oh, Jimmy, Christmas! It's time to stream!" So I was like, I ran in here and like got all the streaming equipment on, and I was actually kind of late. I started the stream at seven oh one. I'm sorry, guys. I was late, and I broke trust with you guys. I'm sorry, and yeah. Oh my, oh my goodness, big chat. Um, everyone told me, uh, to still, oh yeah, everyone told me not to stay, not to stay on that beach, but this, I said, seagulls, 
gonna come poke me in the coconut? And they did. And they did. <laughs> if you guys have not seen the uh, Seagulls Stop It Now bad lip reading sketch um, with from Star Wars, I highly, highly recommend it. It is hilarious. Go check out the bad lip reading channel on YouTube. It's called Seagulls Stop It Now. It's a specific video. So, um, yeah, stroll on that beach. I see it's seagulls. Oh, stop it now. Anyway, so, um, excuse me while I finish my dinner. Hmm. The stew I'm having is fantastic, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. Final Space Frontiers. History was just made. Tell me about that. I'm sorry if you guys can hear me chewing. Hmm. Yes, New Zealand just... <coughs> Excuse me about that. I choked on a piece of rice. Um, New Zealand just reached orbit for the first time. Yes, I heard about that. And I'm uber, uber excited. It's so cool. I, I've been keeping up on all the SpaceX and stuff. And we're going to hit the water really, really hard. I've been keeping up on all the SpaceX stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm so excited about that. All right, so we've tested the engine splashdown very unceremoniously. So, um, oh, I got new science data from the shores. How wonderful. Yeah, so uh, New Zealand just sent a rocket ship blasting into space, and it has entered orbit around the planet Earth, which is really, really cool. Um, hmm. All right. Did you see the launch live? I did not I see the launch live. I watched it on um, a news channel. Mm. Oh, man, the soup is good. Okay. Let's see. Oh, hi. Someone entered the room. Um, so, I have to rescue Frozzy Kerman from orbit. Um, I don't have to, but I could if I wanted to. If I'm feeling generous. Science data from Space Ryan Kerman. Or Kerbin. Yeah, if you're in the sphere of influence of Jebediah, just run some scientific data, and I, I guarantee you'll get science. <laughs> Alright, science data from the surface of the moon. Um, I believe, I can't remember if in this save I've done, uh, if I've done a moon landing yet. Uh, it launched about an hour after I woke up. Oh, cool! Was that this morning? I, I can't exactly remember one. Uh, the moon of one is orbiting. That has nobody in it. And the periapsis just above. What is this? And the Sat-1 Mark II, which is up here. Ah, uh, we, we saw HUD connect on Discord. I know what you mean. You should connect on Discord, yes. Um, and Final Space Frontiers. I had no idea it was even launching until about two minutes before the launch. I heard about it a couple months ago, but I totally forgot. Um, yeah, it's morning for you. Interesting. Uh, transmit. There we go. Transmitted. So we get three science, five reputation, and twenty thousand science or twenty thousand funds just for transmitting a little hunk of science. That is amazing. Twenty minutes actually. Ah, interesting. Let's see about the Muno one. What is this thing? Can I? Oh, I can't transfer to it. Darn. Okay. Uh, tracking station. I need to get there. Okay. Actually, it's funny, I had gum, and I was I was chewing on gum before I started eating, and so the gum was on the edge of my plate. But then I realized that, hey, while I'm talking into a microphone, I probably should not have, um, <laughs> I probably should not have, uh, gum in my mouth while I'm, like, slobbering into my microphone. Uh, you live in Western Australia, and that's why it's ten minutes ago for you, or ten minutes after you woke up for you. Ah, indeed. And you're in Queensland. I didn't know I had so many Australian viewers. That is amazing. I'm so excited. It's cool because some um, interesting phenomenon like YouTube or whatever can bring people together from so many walks of life. I'm getting all philosophical up in this his house. Anyway, um, I really had no set goal for this stream other than just advance my career mode. This is the career mode that I last left on in my... Uh, YouTube series about KSP that I kind of stopped doing. Um, you know, I just kind of got tired of playing KSP. And then I got back into it recently, but I haven't been playing on the save. And I haven't felt like recording for KSP. I haven't gotten a video out on scripting either recently, which I've been kind of slacking. I'm sorry, guys. 
uh, walked over. Alright, land on the moon, walk on the surface of the moon, and plant a flag on the moon. I think we can do that. Exceptional prestige. Let's do it. Okay, what's... what's the, I probably should have checked all of our, like, technologies before we did that. Um... Alright. Nah, this makes me a little mad, because it means that Mini Australia has a better space program than Big Australia. Don't you, for an instant... Think that mini or think that New Zealand is mini Australia because the New Zealanders they'll strike you down for saying that. That's dangerous, man. You better watch yourself. <laughs> from what I've, uh, from what I understand, um, the Polynesian culture and including and this also extends to uh, New Zealand uh, culture and Aboriginal uh, Australian culture is very very interesting. Um, Discord, our clamp is talking about, um, dot gg slash a bunch of stuff. No one really says it, but everyone in Australia thinks it. Yeah, uh huh. Like everyone thinks that uh, Puerto Rico is really part of the U.S. when it's it. Well, it technically is, but it's just a territory, and yeah. Anyway, it, it's a very odd situation. Um, this is. I'm just talking to myself now. From the surface of the moon, I can also achieve that in the same launch. All right, I'm now building my rocket ship. I wish we could listen to some music on the stream, but um, because I like listening to music when I play video games, I have whole music playlists on my personal channel. Um, but the thing is, I don't want to get copyright attacked, so I'm not going to play any. We could do like Elton John's Rocket Man or something like that, but I don't want to. Our clamp, it needed spaces to be, to filter, put that in Discord without the spaces. Oh, okay. All right, do you have a Discord channel? That'd be very interesting if you did. Cool. Um, hey, what's happening with the U.S. government over there right now? Oh, so basically, uh, the U.S. government, um, has reached an impasse. Congress doesn't want to do what the president wants it to do, and the president doesn't want to do what Congress wants it to do. Which means that nobody wants to do what anybody wants to do. And which means that basically no one in the government who works for the government is getting paid until they reach a decision about it, basically. Which is totally bonkers, but anyway, it's basically just a, a power ploy. Hold on, I'm turning down the game volume. Um, <clears throat> so, who has more power, basically? And it, it's... I'm not huge into politics, like, this... Uh, Okay, 2016 election, we have to talk. It, it totally disappointed me. And um, these are Kerbal Engineering System parts, by the way, right here. But, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of shocked and appalled at who uh, got elected. President Trump is not my idea of a president. But um, regardless, he is my president now, and therefore I wish him all the luck in the world running his office. Um. And so far, he's been doing rather underwhelmingly, in my opinion. However, that is only my opinion. And if you have a bone to pick with me, don't pick it with me, pick it with somebody else. Someone who actually cares, because honestly, politics has never been a thing that I really cared about that much. Because it's never really influenced me. Um, I can't vote yet. If you, if you can't tell that I can't really vote by my voice, then what what is even wrong with you? Like, seriously. Are you not that smart, kid? Okay. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I can't vote, and so, honestly, it, it doesn't come down to me whether or not anyone gets elected or not, so, and I, since I can't do anything about it, it really hasn't, doesn't affect me, and I don't really care. So, um, it's Toka! Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing very well! Um, I'm over my sickness, and I'm slacking on making YouTube content for my marvelous, marvelous subscribers, such as yourself, and, yeah, um... I'm kind of been tired recently, I guess. A lot of school tests and stuff getting into the second semester of my school career. I can't vote either, yeah. Voting is kind of, you know, honestly, it, it, like I said, it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really impact me, so I, I don't need to, per se, um, yet. Although I fully intend to when I get around to it. Um, do I have a ladder? No, I have no ladders. Okay, it doesn't matter. I, I really don't need ladders, but yeah, nobody nobody needs ladders. <laughs> Go home, ladders. You're drunk. Okay. Um. 
Uh, let's see. Um, I am, on the plus side, having a family gathering in, I believe, one or two weeks, I forget, um, where my whole family is going to come down uh, from all over the country and going to chill at our house, which will be super, super fun, and I'm super, super stoked for that. Um, because a lot of these people live very far away, and I, I haven't seen them in a long time. I'm, I just realized I'm putting on the wrong struts. Um, yeah. By the way, it's Toka. Um, I'm sorry, again, I told you in the comments of the video, but I found it's Toka's comment on one of these videos about KSP that I was watching, and I was like, it's Toka, I'm sorry that I've been stalking you, but I haven't been meaning to. It's weird. Like... Yeah, I don't think any of us can vote. My 13th birthday be today, be the way, by the way, I can't speak, by the way, is in nearly a week. Happy birthday, sir. Happy um, early birthday. And that's super, super exciting. Um, yeah. Not sure if you want that, like, all over the internet. Like, everyone, everyone, like, it's Toka, for example, could be stalking you. Though he probably, granted, doesn't live in Australia. If he did, that would be insane, because then I would have way too many Australian subscribers, to, and I should start talking like Australian. You know. Um, <clears throat> or you guys could have a challenge for me, where I try and name a bunch of Australian stuff, and eat Vegemite, or whatever you guys do. I mean, honestly, why would you eat Vegemite? Like, do you just have nothing else to do, and that's why? Anyway, um, I've offended enough demographics today, and I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> For doing so. Oh, dang! Happy birthday soon! I, I, that's how I imagine Dark Samus saying that. But, uh, yes, happy birthday, and, um, more power to ya. As the, uh, and the marvelous, marvelous Briscoe Darling from the Andy Griffith show would say. Uh, by the way, you Australians, you guys don't know what good television is until you've seen the Andy Griffith show show about a, a small town mayor or a small town sheriff pardon me called andrew taylor and his kind of stupid deputy barney fight um oh, excuse me oh my god yes do they do the aussie naming challenge oh no you guys realize what you've just done to me right you guys have gotten my first uh, i've gotten my well no actually my second challenge my first challenge was uh, posed to me on one of my live streams and i did that li that challenge but oh no, I have a second one! I'm scared now. Let's see, what, what was I gonna do? I totally forgot. Oh gosh, look at all these problems. Parachute on first stage. Parachute on engine stage. Engine jettison before use. Those are all staging issues. Uh, okay, electric charge. Okay. Electric charge. By the way, if you guys didn't know, when playing Kerbal Space Program, it is very handy to go and check that, um, that little readout down here. Uh, the engineer's report. To see if there's anything wrong. Um, where are you going? Moon? Yes, I'm going to the moon in this save. How do you think Aussies live? Um, Aussies live like pretty much anybody else in the world does. I mean, any other first world country. I don't have experience living in a non-first world country, but um, do the lava bucket challenge. That would be hard, considering that to hold a lava bucket, you would first have to be on fire. And to second hold a lava bucket... You would need to be crazy. I am neither of those. I neither am set on fire, nor am I insane. I'm completely mentally competent, as far as I am concerned. So I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. Sorry to disturb you or anything. Let's call this thing the moon scoot. Moon scoot. Alright. Um, did you put it in Discord? I did not put it in Discord, because I'm not going to be Discording while I'm streaming. Sorry. Uh, we live a lot like Americans. I bet, yeah, I mean, dude, it's not lava, it's boiling water. Oh. Oh. I didn't know. Boiling water? I... That sounds stupid. Okay, forgive me, but that sounds stupid. It's like that Tide detergent challenge that's been going around to eat those Tide pocket things that you've always wanted to eat as a kid and knew that you shouldn't eat because they're detergent. It, that's just stupid and bad for your health, and do not do that, because that's stupid. If, you're, if you are considering... I just bonked the microphone. If you are considering doing that right now, do not do that, because that, that's stupid, and you only have yourself to blame. And the doctors all look at you stupid, and you're just like, no, nah, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, I know, it's stupid. Um, we have good rich have a good rich economy, good architecture. Yeah, architecture, that's definitely something I think of. 
when I think of uh, Australia. Uh, you can write it down for later when there's a KSP multi multi oh, and there is a KSP multiplayer mod as well with servers. No way! <laughs> multiplayer KSP. That's something that they should definitely do. Here, let me grab a pencil. Um, that's something that they definitely. There's a pen. That's better. Um, that's something that I've started this sentence four times. That is something that they definitely should do for um. Let's see. For, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, for KSP, is uh, add in different, um, like, space agencies that are competing with you. Because that would make it very interesting. TKJ, U, Z, Z, C. Oh, by the way, um, is this you getting a shout out? Because that's, that's really cool. Shout out to him on his Discord. Um, I'll check that out. Okay, um, let's see. Whew! Why KSP multiplayer, it will be a mess. Um, let's see. Good medical and technology advancements, yeah. Um, unless they are private servers. Uh, it's by curse the KSP devs. Oh, cool, cool, cool! That's awesome! So they're making their own mod. That is awesome. We invented the black box used in airplanes. Oh, cool! RSS has that. Have RSS. You mean uh, RCS? Uh, rotational control, or yeah, rotational control thruster systems? Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't really need them. And besides, it would kind of weigh me down. This thing needs to be light. Okay, good. The only problem I have now is missing my ladder. Which, I again, I don't have the technology for and definitely do not need. So... Um, right now, I have del uh, delta V of 3,439 meters per second. I can't read. I can't read or speak. No, RSS is a mod. Um, what's the actual, like, non-abbreviated name for it? Um, yeah, reaction control system. Thank you. That was the word I was groping for, but he's, he's groping for something different. Not in a creepy way, just in, like, he's looking for a different word. Get your minds out of the gutter. I I'm talking mostly to myself here. Okay, um, <clears throat> in other news, um, we need to move this situation on. Um, let's see, a real scale solar system, yeah, 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 that's basically, um, where, like, Kerbin is the size of Earth, and everything is the normal size, and therefore the normal density. If you guys look at the density of, like, ev what everything would have to be in Kerbal Space Program for it to make a lot, like, r rational sense, it's insane. Like, everything would have to be super, super dense. Um, crew. Okay, I, I realized what I was going to add um, to this thing. The probodobodine octo thing. I need this to control myself. And what does that need? That needs reaction control thrusters. There we go. Two of those. Alright, so those are not reaction control thrusters. Those are... Um, Reaction wheels, sorry. They will help me to turn this baby. Turn, baby, turn! That's what I tell my stomach every time I eat something I don't like. Um, so, let's see. It's harder on RSS because to get to orbit... Yeah, because everything's huge. It's like, space is at 1,300... Or, 130 miles. Kilometers, right? 130 kilometers? Yeah. A joule's a, bit, a little bigger than Earth. Yeah. Um... I'm gonna go make some breakfast now. Be right back. Okay, go eat. Do not allow yourself to not eat because that is actually severely bad for your health and you should consult a medical physician if you are not eating um, on a daily basis because that's just not healthy. Um, go ahead and eat. And we will be waiting for you with bated breath until you return. <laughs> I want to seem congenial. It's funny. The, the struggle that I have found that is hardest for me as a YouTube creator is balancing professionalism with congeniality. Because to be a YouTuber, you need to have a winning personality, which I might have, might not. You guys decide in the chat. And um, you need to be just a good person in general, I guess. Um, you need to have, like, well, no, you don't even, like PewDiePie, for example. Sorry, Pewds, but you're not really a good person. I just found out we're going out for breakfast. Okay. Uh, just had dinner. It's Toka. Yeah, I just had dinner as well. In fact, if you watch this stream back, I was, like, chewing on the remains of dinner as I was uh, booting it up. 
But um, yeah, go ahead and eat, or go out. Have a great time with your family. Enjoy your family. They will uh, definitely enjoy your company. Um, unless you're like a psychopath or something. Which, yeah, okay, yeah, that's alright if you're a psychopath. Um, actually, if you're a sociopath, if you're like a, a serial killer or something, psychopath is actually not a, like a horrible thing. It's just a personality disorder that anyone can combat normally. Um, let's see. Get over there and kill that stage. Okay. The moon scoot. We have a thrust to weight ratio way higher than it needs to be. This is the beauty of Kerbal Engineer is using uh, this mod. It gives me a thrust to weight ratio of around two, which is all I need. And then, <coughs> let's see, is my stuff all? Yes, it's how it should be. Okay, cool. Actually, these could stand to be higher. Nope, not that. These could stand to be higher. There we go. Okay. Um, thrust weight ratio is good. Delta V looks good. Actually, wait. Hold on. Let me uh, use an online delta V calculator. Uh, KSP delta V calculator. This is a very, very helpful piece of technology. Um, I'm not sure if I can put the link to the website in the chat, but surface. Okay. 6,010 meters per second from Kerbin surface to um to moon surface that's only one way um which means that i am not going to be able to get home with this setup which means i'm just going to need to add more fuel okay that's good with me more fuel hashtag more money more problems actually i'm getting kind of concerned about expenditure here um cost expenditure to be fat or to be uh be accurate we're getting a lot of money wastage up in here um don't wonder um you need more fuel yeah yeah just more fuel okay good so just adding that extra bit of fuel bumps me up to almost 7,000 meters per second which should be a healthy margin of error um let me just go back into the delta v calculator and get me from the surface of the moon to Kerbin. That's 980 meters per second. So let's say 1,000. Which means that I still, even with this, don't have a very good margin. Huh. Wait, it's weird. W what's weird? Um, calculator? Delta V calculator? Or other stuff in your life? Probably stuff in his life, honestly. Um, so, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, my thrust weight ratio is worse because I added that. Hold on. There. Bunked it back up. Um, thrust weight ratio, I just don't want to be going, like, uber, uber fast right out the gate and, like, waste all and like waste all my energy bumping against a hard atmosphere. Add solid fuel boosters. Um, I don't think we need them because we already have these liquid fuel boosters, which will detach. Ah, excuse me, I'm burping. Uh, which will detach probably around when we get to space, maybe around 50,000, or, I always get, you know, 50,000, whatever it is, you guys know. 70,000 is what I call space, and 50,000 is just a bit below that, you know. I'm not sure if that's the actual thing. I'm not going out, but I'm going to make brunch at home. I'm doing a British accent. I should do an Australian accent. And then I'm going out for about 15 to 20 minutes to get a drink. Cool. They add more delta V, says uh, it's Toka. No, sorry. They add more delta V, says it's, to it's Toka. Um, yeah, they do. However, um, they don't... Uh, uh, I could do onion staging, I guess. If you guys don't know what onion staging is, it's basically the process of putting on stages around other stages, going, like, husking out like an onion. So this stage burns, and then it, like, blasts off, and then this stage burns, and it blasts off, and all that. I could do all that. 7,000. That just doesn't leave enough margin. I'd like more of a margin. Because I, I fly kind of dirty. I fly with bad margins, bad fuel margins, and all that. Um, maybe if I add more in the main stage, just a bit more? Now nah, that gives me worse. Oh no, that that gives me slightly better, but only very slightly. Um, if I okay, I'm just gonna go big or go home. 
and more boosters. Okay, does this even help? No, that actually makes my Delta V worse. Ah, what the heck. It's more for style anyway. <laughs> That's what Justin Bieber says about everything. Oh, what the heck, it's more for style. Alright, so that is basically the limit of what I can do. And that gives me about mm, 200 meters per second of margin. It's not as good as I would like, but it's it's alright, I guess. Um, let's see. This this will be fun, you guys. This will be very interesting. Because I'm not sure if I can do that. But, whoops, whoops. I'm not sure if I can do that, like get to the moon and back on such a slim margin. I've never done that before. With this mod, I've now realized just how tenuous things sometimes are. Sometimes I'll way overbuild rockets. You know. Do you secretly eat toothpaste? Is that... So that's why you think I'm named Toothpaste Tuber. Interesting. Um, I, I don't. I'm sorry to disappoint, but I do not. Minus spaces for later. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I wrote that down, Arclamp. Just so you know, I did write that down. Um, also, I'm going to add... I'm not sure if this does anything. It might actually actually be a detriment. But I just do that because I'm superstitious. No, way, wait. wait. That literally takes away 100 meters per second of delta V. Roughly. My gosh, okay. I'm not going to do that. Do, okay, cheers. Cheers, Arc Lamp. Are you, if you're leaving, then uh, I hope you come back. Bye. Um, do you guys know if um, Kerbal Engineer actually does... Like, do you... Do you, do you, do you guys know if, delta, if Kerbal Engineer um, like maps for... Um, aerodynamic effects. That's the word I was going for. The words I was going for. Let me take a swig of water. Hold on. Okay, why a decoupler? Um, because I was thinking of having a, an upside-down decoupler here and then having a nose cone on top that I would jettison uh, for aerodynamic purposes uh, that would save me, like, stuff, you know, that would help. Uh, launch escape system, maybe? No, that just is a huge detriment. Okay, I don't need one anyway. Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so even with the air, the aerodynamic effects, why does it keep doing the thermometer thing? Okay. Ah, this is so boring or annoying to have that in my face on the cursor. Um. So yeah. So um. Yeah. Even with that, it's not really worth it. Um. Ablator. Oh, the ablator. Um. One little trick I discovered, guys, is that the ablator, even on the very, very worst of launches, only takes around 35 to uh, 40 um, units of ablator. So just set it to 60, not 200. Nobody needs 200, unless you're doing multiple passes through an atmosphere, which you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't have to get that hot or that fast when you're just coming back from the moon. So I'm going to set it to, to 60 ablator to have a healthy margin and not be scared. Um, is there anything I can cut down on weight-wise? Anything at all? Um, I have two lights. Eh. Okay, I'm watching this while making brunch. Okay, cool. Um, what are you making, by the way? Tell us uh, in the comment or in the chat what are you making for lunch? And what is your favorite lunch? Because... Uh, Inspiring, helpful commentary is the name of the game when you're trying to be a successful YouTuber. <laughs> Hashtag more money, more profit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to sell you boys out. That's all. All right, I'm gonna go with this margin. I've been stalling for quite long enough. I'm gonna go for this margin. One more extra communitron just for data sake. Okay, hold on. This extra communitron will just help us if anything goes awry. You know, if somehow one of my antennas breaks, I'll have the extra communitron, communitron up there. I'll have ramen and sushi for lunch. Oh. oh, sushi. I love ramen, too. L ramen is the best. Uh, Final Space Frontier is cheese toasty. Ooh, I usually put ham in there, too, but we don't have any. Ooh, that sounds good. The sushi is fantastic, by the way. Final Space Frontier, so I don't know if Australians really have a thing for sushi, but 
I am a sushi hound. I just love sushi. And um, I believe I did a stupid thing as well just now. Uh, I got Jebediah. Yeah, Jebediah is in the seat. Um, we don't want Jebediah in there. Bob Kerman is going to be the first Kerbal to land on the moon in this save. Because since we have the Probodobodine -pro Octo uh, running this thing with reaction wheels built in, Bob Kerman can afford to be on the thing. And yeah, sushi is great. Yeah, Dark Samus agrees. Dark Samus and I know what we're talking about. Oh, sushi is well liked in Australia. Okay, cool. Weeaboo foods are so great, dude. It's not a weeaboo food. It's a Japanese food, okay? And there's a difference. Weeaboo is like fakey Japanese, like you know, like just ooh, Japanese, you know. It's it's kind of insulting to the culture, you know. It's you have to honor the culture of the food that you eat, and it's like, man, Japanese food is awesome. Um, microwave noodles and Walmart pre-made sushi are weeaboo foods. Yeah, okay. What recording software do I use? Okay, so for streams, I like to use uh, OBS because it is a free, reliable um, streaming software. However, for recording videos on windowed things like Roblox and uh, Kerbal Space Program itself, which I play in windowed, not full screen. Um, so like the size of you guys seeing this in the YouTube format, like in the U regular YouTube video page, is actually a bit smaller than what I see it, but not by a huge amount. I don't have a full monitor screen in front of me. Um, let's see. Um, I don't like sushi personally. Okay, that's that's good. Not all of us have the fine, acute uh, senses and stuff. Uh, yeah. So I use OBS um, because it's free. Ooh, that was loud. And we need to go full throttle for this. I thought we might have to throttle down. Uh, but basically, um. Yeah, so OBS, I discovered, uh, does these weird things where it drops my my volume, my mic volume, when I am exiting and entering buildings in KSP. So I can't use it to record KSP. It, like, wrecks my recording, and it drops several words. I, I had that problem several times. Um, OBS is great because it's free. Um, I use the free version of Bandicam currently for recording KSP. Um but I guess if I were to record windowed things, like I've been thinking about doing some Sims 4 gameplay, maybe some League of Legends, all that sort of stuff. I just got into League of Legends, by the way, and it's really, really darn fun. Um, oh, you're doing a KSP stream in four hours. Great, because I'll be asleep. I always am. OBS gives me a lot of lag. Yeah, that's the only thing about OBS. It's great, but it's also kind of, kind of garbage sometimes. Um, <laughs> again, that, that sounds kind of weird, but, you know, you guys know what I mean. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm having a burpee problems because of dinner a while a while ago. Spicy dinner always gives me burpee issues, and I love spicy stuff. Uh oh, no, 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 we're losing it. Okay, we are losing it. We are losing the rocket. Okay, throttle a little down. Throttle back up. All right, let's see if I can do this. Might do some KSP streaming. Awesome, Arc Lamp. Uh, we're losing this again. Um, but if you're awake in four hours, you have nothing better to do. Obviously, since in four hours it will be literally midnight where I am. Or, actually, it'll be like 11 o'clock. Uh, what are your PC specs? I don't know off the top of my head. It's not great, though. It's like, it's, well, it's not a gaming PC. I know that. It's like probably five years old. Um, and it runs stuff decently well i guess maybe i honestly do not know where it stands um i just have not been paying attention and i don't pay attention really all right come on fighting this thing all right come on come on i'm doing a horrible entry approach or orbit approach wasting so much delta B. you know i'm wasting too much delta b on this okay yeah i'm, I'm wasting delta b what I need to do is set that to deploy, set that to deploy, resave Moon Scoot, and if I were to add these, what would this do to my Delta B situation? Okay, it would barely drop it at all. Good, good, good. Because I need those. And actually, nah. It would drop it less if, and it would help me more if. Well, actually, it would help me. What? What the heck happened there? It would help me more if... Actually, no. I, I meant what I said. It would help me less if, but it would have less of an impact on Delta B if I put just one in the middle, and it will stay with me longer. 
Um, control surface uh, arrangement is not optimum. Uh, yeah, I know, but it, the thing is, it's like I'm not trying to set it for um, helping me maintain stability automatically. I want the computer to, um, or I want the just aerodynamics to force this thing to spin stabilize itself. That's how uh, the mini ball worked in the Civil War. Um, a, a French uh, like guy invented this musket or this new type of musket ball called the Minet ball. His name was Jean Claude Minet or something like that. I don't know his first name actually, but uh, it, it was Minet, and it's pronounced in like just regular old American uh, mini ball. And so it had grooves that would, when fired, the bullet would conform to the rifling inside of a barrel and would spin the bullet out, and that spinning and the grooves would you would make the air basically give a um, like a spin to the bullet, which would keep it going straighter and with better accuracy and you know um, all that sort of stuff. I, as you see, guys, we're already starting to spin. Um, I have a computer rocking a ADM Raisin three one thousand three hundred overclocked to uh, three point eight gigahertz with a liquid cooler. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, crosshair uh, six or H sixty uh, with eight gigabytes of RAM. Ooh, that's nice. I think I have only four to four to maybe six. I'm not sure of RAM. Uh, dual channel and GTX one thousand fifty tri super clocked. And a, an each VGA uh, 500 bronze. I have no idea what any of that stuff means, but it sounds really, really impressive. So I'm gonna go with that, with my gut, and say, yeah, it's it's impressive. Um, I hope that's uh, that's not mean. So um, I have a um, Dell um, Intel Core thing. Okay, uh, see, guys, I'm rocking back. I'm already rocking back, and I didn't even intend to do that. So, let's see. Rip, you have, or Rip you, I have a dual thing rig with that many gigabytes of RAM for games. Oh my gosh, dude. 32 gigabytes of RAM. Wait, what? Oh my gosh, dude. I wish I had a gaming computer. Jeez, you guys. You guys, you're mean. You're all under. You're, you're making me sad, you know? So let's see. When all this fuel burns out, what's my profile look like? How could I... Um, do I just need to add more wings? Is that it? Do I need to add more stabilization fins? I feel like that might be it. Let me try that. This might not look better, but it might work better, because these have bigger uh, flight mass and stuff. Edge. I'm going to try to fly it manual first, and if that doesn't work, then I'll try it again. Your computer was about 800 US dollars. I'm not sure what mine was, honestly. Um, my parents bought it, and yeah. Uh, I've been saving up for an Alienware computer. Ooh. It's funny. Um... I had I built a computer, a just kind of a garbage little tiny Linux computer that's sitting in my room without a monitor or keyboard or mouse or anything, um, but it works. And um, my friend who helped me build it told me that it's actually easier to build a computer from scratch um, with scratch parts, the, the parts that are you like the parts that you want, and just have it kind of a, like a mess of wires just hanging out all over the place, and have it have awesome specs than just to buy a ready-made computer with all the trimmings and stuff. It's cheaper and it can work better in some cases. And you build the parts yourself, or you get the parts yourself, which means that if they do sell you cheap and stuff and mess with you, and like buy you a computer that will break, um, or sell you a computer that will break, it isn't like you can't be be sold one. You know, you built one. Okay, yeah, I built one too. Um, your computer is about three hundred and fifty AUS. I'm not sure what that is in US dollars, but um, maybe you could run the conversions for me, because, um, yeah, I, I don't have a spare window open. Uh, it's a Mac Air, MacBook Air. I don't like Mac. Okay, you guys are probably going to hate me for this, but I use Windows, and I don't like the Mac system. I don't like how the, the screen looks. I don't like how the display is or the file things. I feel like Windows is easier for you to get into and, and like, 
mess with the the files of and stuff like that. Um, build a computer yourself, says Stokot a while ago. It's easy and cheaper. Yeah, I heartily agree. If you are listening to this in archive land, then I highly recommend you build your own computer. It's fun, it's easy, and like it's Toka said, and I can speak from experience, yeah, it's easy, and I was 13 when I built it, so, yeah, even a 13-year-old, with the help of a 21-year-old, honestly, uh, can build a computer. So, yeah, and it's fun. Even though, right now, the computer actually is useless to me. Um, it won't be forever, though, that is gonna be the, whoa, okay. That is gonna be the basis for my gaming computer one day. Alright, I'm rocking. I'm getting some sort of, like, kind of shift that is pulling me south and north, as opposed to just due east. Hello, Archive Land! This is Final Space Frontiers. Yes, hello, hello, all these viewers who are watching the stream after it has finally been done. Um, uh, I can send you my old PC parts. It, it, honestly, dude, it's okay. Um, I don't feel like giving out my address on uh, YouTube yet. Because I only have, like, 32 subscribers, you know? Anyone who's subscribed to me is either a stalker or someone who just, gen like, generally enjoys my content, which is pretty crazy in and of itself. Um, uh, half burnt pet pentium? I don't know what that means, but, um, probably some part. Alright, booster sep. Booster sep is clean. And we're going. Okay, so this thing at 45 degrees can barely hold itself up. Oh my gosh, at 20,000 meters. At 20 kilom at 25 kilometers. Ooh. The benefit of working for uh, working in IT for four years. Oh, you have a job, man. It might be uh, too late, but first chat. <laughs> yeah, um, five, four, three, two, one. I'm not sure what you're counting down to. That's how I got my stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, Vietnam is a very old processor. Oh, okay. Honestly, the processor I have in my, my garbage computer might actually be a bit better, so. Thanks, but no thanks. Um, let's see, uh, oh, oh, uh, can I get scientific data? I don't want to regret my science. Yes, 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 yes. Where's my uh, apoapsis? I'm looking in the top left of my screen at my... Apoapsis height. Um, all right, it's at seventy kilometers now. And I'm burning just a bit beyond that. Okay, good. <sighs> Toaster cut off. Oh, okay, that's what we we're counting up to. I was not sure. All right, I'm gonna climb down here, collect the scientific data, restore that collect this data and restore that. I'm getting a bit of popping uh, in my in my ears uh, because of my microphone. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but I'm sorry, I have a crappy microphone. Um, and it's a dual core on the EOF, and the core is burned, and that's why it's slow AF. That's why I bought a new PC. Yeah, I, I get that. So guys, we are approaching the end of our streaming time, I do believe. Uh, it's been about an hour. Um, I can't even believe that. It's been like an hour. My gosh. Uh, it doesn't feel like it, and I don't want to leave you guys, because streaming is fun, and I feel, feel less alone when I am streaming. Um, yeah, so, it's funny. Um, the thing about most YouTube channels, I realize, is most big YouTube channels, like Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, GT Live, PewDiePie, talk about their fan base and act with their fan base as if they were a family. And that's one thing that I want to cultivate a relationship, not just because I want the views or the subscribers or anything like that, it's because I want to have a big happy family of people who are all excited about the same stuff and interested in the same stuff together, just having a good time, you know? And it's fun to hang out with like-minded individuals. So that's the community that I hope to build here on YouTube. And congratulations if you guys are parts of are a part of it, because honestly, it brings me a lot of joy just to be here and be streaming for you all and entertaining you guys, and I hope that you can enjoy that. Um, Let's see, we have a confirmation that the payload has separated from the toaster, and the toaster is now accelerating into orbit, hopefully. Actually, we might be crashing back down to Kerbin pretty soon. Um, yeah, honestly, I think we cut the margin just a bit too close here. Too close for comfort. Um, see you on Discord. I'll see you on Discord, man. 
Au revoir. Are you, uh, do you have, that is your Discord. That is so cool. So, I've been thinking about getting a Discord, but, uh, yeah. Wait until you have 122 subs like me. That's exciting. Yeah, um, uh, do you know the way? The way? The way to what? Um, uh-oh. Engine burnout. Okay. Stage. Bye-bye. All right. We have periapsis. Watching my periapsis height up here. Periapsis height. Not quite. 70. 70. Okay. That is so close. I'm 200 meters away from falling back. Oh, it's a meme. Okay. Um, it's my server. All right. Cool. Do what you love and the subs will come. Yep, that's that's been my uh my thing as well. It's like yeah, it's like it I'm a person with a certain mindset and so the people who come to my channel and will and sub to me are the people who have a variation of the same mindset. And that's cool. It's fun to talk with people who are like minded. And sometimes you're in a mood to argue, you're in a mood to sharpen iron against iron, you know, and you want to learn about new ideas. But sometimes you just want to be you, you know, you just want to have people agree with you and be like, hey, I feel like I'm part of a group, you know, and I want you guys to have a sense of individualism. Even if I do get thousands and thousands of subscribers one day, I hope that it will still continue to feel like we're a big family. So that's my sentimental bit <laughs> for today um, and ask people to like and subscribe. Well, yeah, I, I mean. I don't want to beg, you know, but I want to, like, remind them, if you do like my content, basically just hit the subscribe button, it's a glorified bookmark, and you can keep, believe my stuff. Yeah. You have 37 subscribers. Awesome. Uh, and I have, and I spend eight or more hours editing my videos. Editing, man! Urgh! Everyone thinks that editing is easy, and it doesn't take forever, but they're wrong, dude. Like, editing is a beast. Okay. Honestly, I'm right here at my burn node, almost. When the moon comes over the horizon, that is when that is the moment you start burning. Uh, if anyone wants to else to if anyone else wants to join us, you can join us at the Discord in the chat. All right, moon is over the horizon. Begin the burn. It's pretty easy. Uh, send it to my Discord. Uh, his Discord is in the chat as well. I've been thinking about getting a Discord. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to set it up or anything. I I got one actually, but I'm not sure how to set it up. It's funny, I'm, I'm looking over at, at my plate, and I'm like, there's gum there, and I want the gum. I want the gum so bad. <laughs> uh, I like chewing on gum, for some reason. Like, I, I chew on gum, that's my thing. It's funny, to my friends, I'm the person who chews on gum, and the person who is always wearing a hat. I always wear hats. Um, but it's hard to work editing. Yeah, the thing is, um, it's hard work editing. And the thing is, if you say something one, like... It went way wrong. You you say something like just a little bit off in your mind. You have to listen to that you saying that over and over and over and over again, editing your videos. So every little thing that you hate about your own voice is like come back comes back again and again to bite you in the butt every time you edit. It's crazy to make a fifteen minute video for me. It literally takes seven hours of editing. Yeah. Um, if you ask me to make a b basic video, it'll take like ten minutes. It'll take like 10 minutes. Yeah, if you ask me to make a basic video, it'll take me seven hours. So, yeah, I use, uh, by the way, for editing. Oh, the sun just came up. That's a pretty picture. Man. Uh, I use for editing Filmora Wondershare um, editing software. It's uh, not free. It's, I think, 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Um, really, really worth it, though. You can do a lot of editing on there. Oh, whoops. And I've done editing for my friends as well. All right, so since we have just burned a bit uh, beyond our thing, actually. Um, yes, objects in space tend to float around. And we'll collect that goo. We'll collect the goo, we'll study the goo, and we'll look at that goo. Yeah, boy, we'll look at that goo. All right, um, I'm just getting rid of the data that's useless at this point. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a new episode of my ISS KSB series going up later. Guys, go check that out. If you're in archive land, it's all probably already up. And you can go check that out at uh, his channel, Final Space Frontierists. Um, let's see. 
Oh, it's funny. Um, uh, yeah. What was I gonna say? Uh, it's pretty easy to edit. Yeah, it's it's easy to edit some videos. Tough to edit others. Um, this the the ch most challenging thing for me when I'm editing a video when I did edit a video, uh, one time was the toughest thing was editing a thing where the screen slowly faded to black and dun dun music played. Um, it was in I think episode two of my KSP series. That was very hard because I had to edit several degrees of uh, blackness coming over the screen. And it's kind of rough still. And it's like, dun, 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 as some, like, event occurs. Very interesting. Very scary. You should definitely go watch it. Hashtag shameless plug on my own channel. Um, yeah, right now I'm kind of worried about fuel. but And I'm worried about moon intercept, actually. Oh, nope, nope. I shouldn't be. Moon intercept. Let's get some high over the moon data. Time to ferry apps is 12 minutes. Okay, good. That's what I love about Kerbal Engineer. I don't have to go look out in the map for any of this stuff. I can just check it all out. Um, let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I know this is a bit weird, but I just thought about how, like, 100 years ago-ish, editing wasn't even a thing. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I am a history buff. I love history and, like, just... It's, it's so cool to me to think about people just like us living totally different lives a long time ago. And, um... I was looking at pictures from World War One, and uh, I looked at this lady who, who, or actually, I'll keep going, but I looked at this lady who um, was a forensic lip reader, who read lips from, like, forensic murder footage and stuff, and she was able to read the lips of the soldiers in the footage, and one of them was saying something like, I hope we're not in the wrong place, because this is going to be very dangerous, and that regiment, after that footage was taken, less than an hour, that regiment went over the top, and most of them were killed, and I just started burning the wrong way. But yeah, it was, it was really, really sad, and like, you think, when are we in the wrong place? Like, suddenly you're just driving around an intersection or something, and a terror attack happens, like, right next to you, or a car crashes into you, and you're dead. Or one you love is dead, you know? Like, we rarely think that we're in any danger going about our normal lives, because we're desensitized to it. Yeah, um, we just got off on a really deep, deep note about humanity. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I depressed us. I depressed the heck out of us. Um, let's see. We have entered orbit around the moon. Now we can kind of circle around, look for a landing site. Um, I'll read the chat in just a sec. I'm, uh, focusing. Okay. Um, uh, it's Toka was... Talk oh, hey, thanks, a person- Oh, yeah, Final Space Frontier has just got its Toka to sub to them. That's really cool. Uh, do you want me to, sh to shout you out in my next video? Um, go ahead, if you if you want it. If you want it, uh, it's Toka. Yeah, sure, if you want to. That's so cool. Here we are, just friends chilling. Alright, um, fuel. I'm so worried about fuel, guys. And we need to- Oh, actually, never mind. I was going to say we need to land on one place on the moon. We have to land on the daylight side. But I'm like, actually, no, we don't. We do not need to land on the daylight side. Okay, I'm getting low. Get some low over the moon footage. Or not footage. Um, what's the other word? Uh, the other word that I was thinking of that you guys don't know and can't possibly figure out. Um... Get some surveillance area stuff, so we can see where I want to land. We'll look for a landing zone, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. Now we're coming down. By the way, I'm taking, or I'm using a an effect called the, or what is it? Uh, I forget what the effect is called, but basically burn at your periapsis. Because at your periapsis, that is the most efficient place to burn. I think I'm going to land here. In this crater, this is the moon's far side crater, I do believe. East far side crater, I do believe. Um, and it is, first of all, let me get some science, actually. Whoa, too far. And um, it is a really great place. It's soft and uh, nice to land in. And also, it's in daylight right now, uh, going towards sunset, I think, based on the way the moon turns. Um... Let's see. I don't need any of this. Someone's already come here before. 
Uh, no one's actually landed on the moon in this save yet. I know I'm going over time, you guys. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind. This might be an odd time stream. Like, it might not have a, like, one hour or two hours. It might just be, like, a little bit. Don't land on the crater. Bad idea. Actually, inside the crater is one of the better places to land. Um, it adds, uh, like, a lot of science, first of all, because it's not just the moon's midlands. It's, like, it's a special biome. And, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do that, I think. Let me get... I'm going to get to around here and then burn up in uh, a normal direction, or anti-normal as it is. Um, and then I think... Let's try burning anti-normal. Quick save. Yes, it's anti-normal. Okay. Should be good. And then... I'm going to go to about there and then burn. Now, I'm not going to try to attempt a suicide burn, which is burning so efficiently that you burn right up until the point when you touch down, because that's insane. You tried to land it on the dark and exploded so hard. Okay, so, yes, in the dark is very, very dangerous. However, what you can do to get away with that, what I did, is I installed lights. So I can land at any time, and I can see by the parallax angle, that this is very complex sounding, but trust me, the angle of the lights, like, together, tells me how far away I am from the ground. Um, and also just the size of the light circle. Um, yeah, so, but, if you guys didn't know, you can press C to go into your internal view. This is what I had to do um, yesterday when I landed something on the moon. And look at, balance your speed, which will be surface speed instead of orbit, with your radar altitude, your altitude from the ground. When you get low, as you can see, in meters, it's three kilometers, sorry, Three kilometers, I was pointing at the screen, then I realized you guys can't see. Three kilometers, two kilometers, one kilometer, 500 meters, 400, 300, 200, and 100, and zero. So those are all the, like, things. Um, and you can also watch your vertical speed, like, over here. That's a rough approximation. And then when you get up here, you can just watch your speed. But what I had to do is, it was pitch black outside this window, and I just had to watch my speed and this, and juggle, tapping, shift, and control to throttle myself. It was scary as all get out. But I ended up doing it, and, uh, yeah, actually, I use an Xbox controller, uh, that's what its Toka says. Interesting, I've never actually gotten using a controller or joystick or anything. I always use mouse. I use mouse and keyboard for everything. Partly I don't have an Xbox, and partly I don't think it would be advantageous to use one. Okay, gears are deploying, and Kerbals are landing. All right. You use a MacBook keyboard. Is that a wireless keyboard? Because if so, is there any, like, delay on that? Because I've, I've figured out, like, you know, wireless mouses are all fun and games and great, but first of all, they have no scroll wheel, especially in the Mac ones. And that's another reason I dislike Mac. They have no scroll wheel. And also, uh, they're wireless, which means that they have a bit of a delay sometimes, and especially in first-person shooters, that is horrible and detrimental. You know, you use mouse and keyboard for Battlefield and CSGO. Yeah. That's that's definitely better for CS:GO uh, to use a mouse and keyboard, but uh, I don't know. I've played uh, um, what's the word um, Halo Four before, and uh, I found that it's actually really good to use a controller on that with high sensitivity. Um, I like to whip around and like get headshots and stuff. Bring her down slowly. Yes, I I I've landed on the moon many 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 times, but this is the first in this save. So let's see, I'm going to go over here. I'm actually going to do it from here, why not? It'll be fun. Keep burn. I want to cancel out my horizontal velocity. Bring my speed down. As you see, my radar altitude is slowly creeping down. Um, I'm at about one kilometer right now. And I'm looking at my speed, slowing myself down. Excuse me, uh, it's wireless mice. <laughs> wireless mice ah yes um what's the name of this lander this lander is called uh the moon scoot uh as scott manley would would pronounce it um yeah it's a wireless mic the lander itself is uh the tin can i, I forget what it's actually called but something like that i am fighting the urge to press the c key right now to see outside the cockpit but i'm going to land it like this just for you guys okay 300 meters. Well, 350. 300 now. 
going at 20 meters per second. I should be down. I'm not good on about on the fly math. 18 meters per second. I want to make touchdown speed about five if I can. Angling altitude, changing that. Okay, and softly does it. I'm not talking because I'm concentrating. And touchdown. With no bouncing. All right, we just landed. Nice job, guys. And as you can see, we could have done that from the outside much, much easier. Ba 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 bum 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 ba da ba 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 bum. And we just landed on the moon. Houston, the moonscape has landed. Repeat, the moonscape has landed on the moon's east far side crater. I was right about the biome, by the way. <laughs> the moon, the gauge, uh, the pressure gauge is sitting there motionless. Perhaps you should give it a few quick taps to be sure. That's my uh, my Scott Manley doing a funny voice impression. All right. Um. Well. Well, we are um, collecting data and restoring data and moving data and all that sort of stuff. You glance around the moon's surface, vaguely appreciating the quietness and sense of stillness and peace that is descending upon you right now. All right. We've landed. Let's get a crew report from the crater. Um, it's took. I have a lot of gaming things. Um, you have a oh jump experiments okay um you have a four, 144 gigahertz monitor with a g-sync with g-sync a four or a nine thousand excuse me nine thousand dpi mouse and brown switch mechanical keyboard nice copy moon scoot we got a bunch of guys around are about to turn green we're oh <laughs> oh final space frontierists how droll of that how droll of you all right well, um, we're about to plant a flag. Um, oh, if he doesn't fall down the side, he's gonna just... He's gathered an EVA report from the from space just above the moon's east far side crater. We're on a bit of a slope, actually. Um, actually, let's see, quite a slope. We're at about a slope of around a... maybe 15 degrees? Interesting. Plant a flag. Dark, 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 dark. Bob Kerman. First Kerbal to land here. All right, what should we call this place? What should we call this site? Um, you guys decide in the chat. Um, and plaque text is going to be... I can't believe we landed in cockpit view. You. On a live stream. Bah, 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 bah. Moon Scoot base. It isn't a base, though. It's Toka. What do you think? I want to make it unanimous in the chat. Let's see. Everyone, decide, decide, decide. If I were, like, an experienced um, live streamer, I would put a poll up in the chat or something. But you guys decide. Um, I can't believe we landed in cockpit view. I spelled cockpit wrong. Cockpit, there. All right. The cheese tastes funny here. Ah. Make it a base. I can't make this place into a base. There's, this thing has to come home. Je or Bob has to come home. Um, the cheese tastes funny. That's what I'm going to call it. There. All right. We've planted our flag. Thank you, Arclamp, for that wonderful suggestion. How about the Moon Scoot Crater Ridge? That'd be fun, but... Nah. Oh, wrong button. Wrong button. Oh, please don't break the comms array. Okay, that'd be very, very bad if he just, like, smacked into the antenna. Very imaginable, but still very, very bad. Oh, you have an EVA report from space just above it already. Okay, well then we'll get one of the ground. The dust is getting everywhere, he says. <laughs> Yay! All right, here we are. We have one thousand or one hundred twenty-two units of oxidizer and nine hundred and ninety-nine point six one units of liquid fuel. <sighs> I don't think you have enough fuel. Might just have to do a rescue mission. If I do, that'll be in the next stream. Um, because I have to get to stop streaming. You know. All right. Oh my gosh. 
There's something about the moon that is just so beautiful. I feel that way about Minmus too. Just take a minute. Hold on. Just take a minute to enjoy this. Kerbal Kind set foot on the surface of the moon. This could be the thumbnail for the live stream when it goes up. Yeah. That'll be nice. There we go. Well, guys, I think we're going to leave the moon just how we left, or just how we got it. Um, transmitter recover sign. Okay, we're going to do that. So, guys, tell me, I, I always do this the wrong way. Which way do I launch? Which way do I have to be going around the moon? Because the moon is turning this way, like from over here to over here. So do I launch with it? And in which case, which way is that on the nav ball? Gotta get to Duna after Minmus. Yeah, don't try Eve. Eve is hard. Eve is fun. I've gone to Eve. I've gone to every planet in the in the solar system, um, or in the Kerbal system. But uh, of all my favorites, uh, Duna is definitely one of my is up there. Go east. Okay. Is this east? Yes, this is east. Okay. I always get confused because like when you're looking at a nav ball. Yes, east is the correct direction to go. However, is that right or left on the nav ball? Because it's like I'm looking that way. And I, so right now, okay. Right now, I'm looking north. So it's left. Going east is left. But when I'm looking at the nav ball, east is right. Down here. So that's always confused me. Um, compasses are the same way. I'm always like, I don't know which way to go. You know. Um, alright, so now, burn sideways. I just hope I have enough fuel to circularize. <laughs> I knew I cut it close. I didn't want to cut it this close. Ooh, this, yeah. I might not, I might not even have enough to circularize, guys. We might impact hard. We very well might impact hard. Okay, come on. Come on. We're getting up there. Okay, good. We are officially safe. Okay. <sighs> okay, that scared me. Um, okay, we're good. We're at orbital speed. Orbiting very, very low. Let's see. Do I, I'm going to click safe here and start burning. Because I think this may be the correct way to burn. If we are going to go home. I don't have patch conic, so I can't tell. With a maneuver node. Oh. Well, let's try this. I think this is the correct direction to burn. No. Oh, actually, well, don't quick save. Why? I already quick saved when I was about to land and while I was on the surface several times, so I might as well now. See you on Discord. Bye! Bye, Arc Lamp. I'll see ya. Um. Maybe send a rescue mission to save it if you run out of fuel. Oh, I definitely will, Final Space Frontiers. Bob is too valuable. But I might not need to. Just might not. I have nine. Okay, this is going to be super close, guys. This is going to be cl so close, it'll be a matter of life and death. Like, for Jebediah. Okay. Periapsis. We got it, guys. Look at this. Tw I'm going to set it at 22 because that'll provide a good arrow break. Look at this. Our clamp, I'll see ya. We got it. It's going to be super hot, too. Uh, not if you just set it to 22 kilometers. 22 kilometers always works without fail. Um, and remember how I set the ablator to 60? I should be totally fine. Oh my gosh, and I have five units of Oxidizer left. Five units. And I was worried about our, our fuel margins, guys. This is tighter than NASA works with. You better have a heat shield. I do. I do. It's Toka. I said it's a blader to a special, uh, special thing. Did I collect a uh, high over Kerbin scientific data? I'm not sure if I did. Kerbin's upper atmosphere, near Kerbin, near Kerbin, high over. Yeah, I, I did. Okay, good. 
Ugh, cracking my back. And now we just wait. We wait till we come down. And got not to go too fast that we just like go straight through the atmosphere. Oh man. We went so far out above the moon. We were there. We were orbiting in here, and now we went all the way out, almost halfway out to Minmus. We could have gotten a Minmus encounter, actually, if we had gone just a bit higher. Well, no, we couldn't have, not with our fuel situation. <laughs> all right. One last quick save here before we enter our atmosphere. And yes, I will jettison the stage um, of all of our scientific and fuel components and stuff. All right, um, one last little burn. We're getting our periapsis to about 30 kilometers. Okay, one last quick save. All right, and now we're going to jettison this sideways so this doesn't burn us up, or so it doesn't wreck us. We're going to retract our antenna, and we'll point down to the surface. As you can see, our heat shield is here. So this, we don't want to come back and smack us in the back. Let's hope this radial mount parachute can keep us alive. Quick save. I, I know I keep saying it's the last quick save, but it's not. All right. All right, guys. This is the, the moment of truth. We are coming down to land on the surface of Kerbin from a lunar orbit, from the lunar surface. Oh, there's the exploding thing. There it is, blowing up in the distance. Roasty Kerbals, no. No, it's Toko. We will have no burning Kerbals on this stream. Bob Kerman. You have to live. They'll demonetize us on YouTube if you die. That reentry is going to be close. No, it's going to be fine. I'm pretty good. Or, I'm not pretty good. It's just that, like, Kerbal is pretty forgiving, you know. That's a pretty small heat shield. Honestly, it looks like that. And you, you may be right to look at the temperature gauge and say, uh, the capsule is uncomfortably heating up. But it's actually fine. Um, the, ra the heat shield works by, uh, basically being a big radiator so it radiates heat from the surrounding parts as well demonetization peril yeah i don't want it to get demonetized if we have a kerbal die in the stream we can't have that so you have to stay alive bob just because of youtube algorithms all right and all, as you can see we are going to touch down our periapsis is now almost or our apoapsis is almost below the atmosphere and our periapsis is well in, well inside the surface and as you guys can see, our ablator is doing fine right now. Up here, we can see our ablator is holding at 27 and going down. So we burned off 40. Um, actually, not quite. We've burned off like 35 right now. 35.5 uh, of our ablator. And as you guys can see, the ablator is now burning off at a negligible rate because we are going so slowly. So, as you guys can see, yeah, 35. We burned off 35 of later in that really big thing. Come on, Bob. You gotta not get cooked. Yep, he's fine. He is totally, 100% fine. Now the question is, can this one parachute land him? Man, we're just full of excitement today. Oh my gosh. And I should have stopped the stream half an hour ago. I just I re just remembered that. <laughs> as, a, as the reactor... As the re-entry blackout continues, the team awaits news of the demonetization. The time for which the capsule will usually come out of radio contact, or come into radio contact again, has come and gone. Many families around the United States of Kerbin are waiting with bated breath for any news of the re-entry. Standing by on Kerpalo 13. Kapala 13! Kapala 13! This is Bob Cameron! We're going to see you again! Da, 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 da. That was our, uh, my little, uh, thing for Apollo 13, which is a fantastic movie with, uh, with, um, the guy who played, uh, Woody from Toy Story. I forget his name. Um, how can I forget his name? Come on! And Kevin Bacon and, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, Tom Hanks, that's his name. A lot of awesome actors in that fantastic movie. Um, G to G, bye everyone, it's Toka, bye! I hope you can stay for the landing, but, um, because everyone is deserting me. Tom Hanks, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Final Space Frontiers, yeah. Um, alright, here we go. 
Ooh. Okay, good. We're at a, a solid 6.5 meters per second. We're going to be golden. We're going to be so fine and dandy and everything. Let me just take a drink of water. Mm. And darn it, dribble it all down my shirt. <laughs> because I'm trying to do it quickly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Live streams, am I right? Alright. This is so cool, you guys. Oh. Crew report while flying over Kerbin's grasslands. Haven't gotten that before? Really? Let's take an EVA report. Okay, I have gotten that. One last quick save. By the way, a movie that I highly recommend you guys uh, buy on Amazon, or rent on Amazon at least and watch, is called Gods and Generals. It's a fantastic movie about uh, the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, or actually, no, not about the Battle of Gettysburg. It's like the precursor to the Battle of Gettysburg. I think it has Fredericksburg and Shiloh and all those fantastic movies. Uh, it's a really good movie about both sides of the Civil War. Um, you know, and uh, like I said, if you guys are a history buff like me, I hope you guys enjoy it. And there's the moon! There, we have come from the moon, and we have now, like, come down uh, in, on Kerbin. Completely wrong continent, but who gives? We are home. All right, I'm going to recover this vessel. And yeah, that about does it for this stream, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me through the whole thing. I mean, gosh, you guys are just, you guys are awesome. 500 science from that. Only 815 uh, recovered funds uh, from that. But still, we gained a ton of money because of the reputation, and fr from because of the things. He advanced to level one. He went through an entire level of uh, stuff because of that mission. He had no um, experience previous to that. He was the first guy to land on the moon. Explore Kerbin, rendezvous two vessels in orbit. We can do that in the next stream. So guys, this was a fantastic stream. We had five units of the fuel and oxidizer left, and we just barely got home okay. That is the beauty of Kerbal Engineer. If I had not had Kerbal Engineer, I would have gotten stuck in orbit and had to send a rescue mission. I would have had to leave you guys on a cliffhanger. As is... We have everything good and gold, you know? This, this is fantastic. I'm going to post this live stream later, but yeah. So now, we have 559 science to spend, which you guys will have to wait with beta breath after I finish my other series. And, uh, yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching the stream. And uh, I'll see you guys all next time. Think up, Oh, by the way, Final Space Frontiers. Think up some more ideas uh, for me about Australian stuff for me to, to do a video about. Maybe I can do a separate video about that. Anyway, um, I will see you, Dark Samus. Farewell, and uh, as always, toothpaste on.